So now I'm going to show you a little bit of how this game works. So we, we looked at this website already. We have this hot bar down here, a bunch of different stuff that's important. Our main screen we're going to be looking at is the office. And so the office will have assistant alerts. So these are important things. So for example, we need four, 38 active wrestlers on the roster to avoid looking amateurish. We have 47, so we're good. Eric Eisen needs to be assigned a gimmick because we just made him a wrestler again. Joe Sexy is a manager without any clients. School the Bones is a manager without any clients. So what we're going to do is assign those things. So first of all, let me set the search. let's go to Eric Eisen. Okay. So he's a heel. He, he, we could make him a face, but he's much better as a heel. So we're not going to do that. And we're going to give him a gimmick. So gimmicks are more free flowing in this game than you might expect. In future games, they would just have, it'd be like this. They'd have a list of gimmicks you could select and go, okay, I want to do this. But here you can kind of come up with your own thing. So they just have a different set of what the gimmick is based off. So you can see there's a bunch of different kinds. He's pretty good at playing a swagger or a Weasley underdog. We're going to name this gimmick. Um, since we're not really using him as an authority figure, it doesn't make sense to make that his gimmick. So we're just going to make it... We're gonna name it. We're just gonna name his gimmick Eisen because it's like he's an Eisen. It's like beating a McMahon, right? And then we can set it on this little scale here. The more generic our gimmick is, the more familiar and easy to grasp will it be. It's less likely to get a low rating, but also less likely to get a very high rating. The more unique it is, the bigger the risk of it failing, but the higher chance of getting a very safe rating, right? And then safe versus creative. Uh, safe gimmicks last longer before they get stale, and they generate less unique pros and cons. Creative gimmicks won't last as long, but can be tweaked quite a lot and will gen tend to generate unique pros and cons. We don't really care about him having um, pros and cons, so we're going to play it safe. We'll put it just, just slightly on unique. Just slightly. And we're going to confirm that. Okay, so next time he's on screen, we'll find out how that gimmick went for him. What else do we have? Um, so it's going to tell me that he's preparing a gimmick still until it happens. Joe Sexy needs it to manage somebody. So Joe Sexy's a heel. His gimmick sucks. Um, we're going to tweak it, and hopefully it will get better. Because um, I don't really want to have him debut a new gimmick. And we're going to have him manage a heel that needs it. So who needed a manager that we talked about? Scythe needed a manager. And Joey, Joe Sexy would help him a lot. So let's do that. Let's uh, go here. And make Joe Sexy Scythe's manager. Boom. And hopefully they have good charisma together or chemistry together. We won't know that until they appear on screen together. But that will help shore up uh, Scythe's microphone skills. And, I mean, Joe Sexy used to be a pretty big player in SFW. He's got a 60, 60 overall popularity. So that will help. Uh, and then Skull. So you're like, wait, School the Bones would have been a great manager for Scythe. Except that he's a babyface and Scythe is a... Bad guy. So, what we could have Skull do is manage someone like Lenny Brown, who need who we want we want Lenny to really rise to the top. So we're gonna have Skull manage him. Even though is Skull really a good manager. Yeah, he's got good skills. Okay, so Skull managing him will be good, and that's gonna lead me to talking about our storylines next. Because of our product, we need to have at least five storylines with more than 70 heat to meet the demands of the fans. We're currently achieving this. So, like, the game default doesn't have you achieving this, which is pretty terrible because I there, what I did is I did some pre-made stories because in order to achieve this within your first show, you have to, like, book a really weird wrestling show um, that has, like, those two new storylines very involved. And it's like, why would I do that? So I pre-added some. And so we have Fear the Reaper, which is our hottest storyline right now. It's Rocky Golden versus Scythe. Uh, a fresh big money feud in the SWF is blah, blah, blah. They're strongly booked, hugely over. Um, Scythe working a main event program early in his career is amazing opportunity. So that's cool. They have, We have the triple threat uh, storyline between Remo, Rogue, and Valiant, which SWF SWF and WWE, they love their triple threat storylines. We have Des Davids versus Lenny Brown, which is considered hot. Lenny's a little less over than Davids, but I'd like to put the North American title on Lenny because I think Davids is too good for it, but I want to do it without killing Davids' momentum. We have 
the Hawaiian Crush, which is High Flying Hawaiian and Akuma versus Paul Huntington and Monte Triscard. Not a hot storyline by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but this, this we'll get the belts off these guys and put them on these these nice Hawaiian boys, and that will do well. Supreme Star Rising. Um, this is Jungle Lord versus Spencer Spade. Dulce Moreno's there uh, helping Spencer Spade. Again, not a hot storyline. What I like to do is I like to add a worker to the storyline, and that's mainstream, and add as a major role. And uh, he's aligned with Spencer Spade. And that helps, too. And this this storyline is basically the burying of Jungle Lord. Uh, big Money, Big Problems is uh, Mikey Lau versus Brandon James. This is a good feud. A lot of times these guys turn out to have good chemistry, which is nice, too. So we'll see what happens. And this is the one I made. Hollywood gets put in his place. I didn't write a description for it, but it's Hollywood, Brett Starr, and Joey Morgan. Um, I'm going to add one more storyline that I think is going to help us out. And that is going to be ZWB versus Randy Unleashed. The Bump Foles going at it. Bump full on Bump full action. All right. So these two are going to go at it. That's going to be a good a good feud. And then uh, we still have the Crippler, who's not really involved in anything, and Jack Bruce right now. Um, and because... Um, Skull is managing Lenny. We're going to add Skull to this storyline aligned with Lenny. Um, and that will help him too. But Jack Bruce really isn't involved in anything. What do I have Jack Bruce set as right now? He's an occasional wrestler and a personality. So we're going to change that. We're going to take away the personality and put manager. Because I want him to manage somebody. I don't know who yet. But we, we will figure that out. I really want Mikey Lau to get over. So we're actually going to put Jack Bruce with him in a temporary capacity. Because I really want him to get over, and then we'll add him to the storyline here. Big money, big problems. And then that way it's kind of a two-on-two storyline with the managers evenly, even though Jack Bruce is probably a much bigger deal than uh, Chrissy Angel. No offense, Chrissy Angel. So that's our storylines. So let's, let's talk about the screen. Right now it says the production department currently has warnings regarding potential penalties. So... Basically, you can set your production quality, right? And right now, our broadcast quality is industry standard, but there's another company somewhere that has higher, and so it's kind of making us look amateur in in uh, in comparison. So we're going to upgrade it, even though it's going to cost us about uh, $20,000 now and fifty five or 3500 a month, 35000 a month. So now we're cutting edge. So now I think we're the highest. Oh, no, we're not. I could go up to industry leader. Yeah, we're going to do it. Okay, we're highest there, highest there, and highest there. So that way, if anybody doesn't have industry leader here, they are going to be looking like bums compared to us. Let's just kind of go over things one by one here. Brand split, we're not doing anything with a brand split right now. Down the road, we might do like a two shows brand split kind of thing brand splits can also be useful for um like when we have a, a b show like for example 205 live would be probably be considered a b show in the wwe world so that could be useful chemistry so here we can see all chemistry um on anything which we haven't unlocked any chemistry yet because we haven't run a show so it's not going to show us anything creative we've kind of dove into but this is going to show us a couple different things. Franchise players, who are our most over people. We have Jack, Bruce, Rocky, Golden, Remo, and Scythe. Next big things we talked about. These are our next guys that could possibly be leading the show for us. Hot prospects are um, if they could be good workers, not necessarily over performers, but good workers. Talk to talk. These are the best talkers in our company. Uh, Jack, Bruce, Emma Chase, Rocky, Golden, Angry Gilmore, which is surprising, and School of Bones. Uh, showstoppers, these are our best workers. These are our best... Um, well, no, these are our best guys who can um, steal the show. So they're like flashier. They're, they're good workers, but they're also like, hey, these, these guys can really put on a show for people. And then these guys are the ones that are ring general. So they have good psychology. They have good basics. They have good selling. So that's these guys. Who's hot? This is all about momentum. Okay. Who has the best momentum? Who's not? These guys don't really have a lot of momentum. And then hidden gems are workers that we do not have signed that we would like to or we should sign and we'll get into that in a minute 
The company figurehead, also known as the ace in Japan, is the worker who is positioned as the face of the company. Not only do shows generally revolve around them, but they are also the primary focus of all the marketing and merchandising that the company does. A strong figurehead can massively boost business and help a company prosper. Rocky Golden is the current figurehead of SWF. He's been figurehead for six months, so he's not yet fully established in the role. Further analysis will be available once he's established. So basically, Rocky Golden is our Hulk Hogan. He's our John Cena. Okay. Um, figureheads are very important because they can affect merchandise sales. They can affect your show. If you have a figurehead that's overshadowed by a different worker, um, they can... Um, actually affects attendance negatively and merchandise negatively which isn't super realistic to me but it's how the game works if rocky golden we we just job rocky golden and he ends instead of being like a 91 over uh overall or overness rating he ends up in like the 70s he will start to negatively affect us being the figurehead now it takes a year for the figurehead to be fully established and so there's no effect right now in six months we'll find out if he's good, but we got to protect him for that six months and protect him after that so he doesn't become, you know, irrelevant in that role. Now, Rocky Golden's a great figurehead because he has excellent star quality, he's charismatic, he's very over, and he's an amazing baby face. You got to be a good baby face to be a figurehead. You can't be a bad guy and be a figurehead. It just doesn't work. Right now, he's the best we got for it, and he's a pretty good one. Eventually, someone like Spencer Spade could possibly jump into that role. Valiant is probably a little too old, and his star quality isn't as good. But there's some guys we'll sign later on that like have some really high star quality that eventually could be that in a few years. And that's kind of what we're looking for to replace Rocky. So Rocky's kind of got to be where he's got to be. Even the last time I said he, uh, we don't want him there forever. Uh, product we kind of talked about, but this is um, basically what's expected of us based on what our show is, sports entertainment. Okay. We do three ring circus match focus. So the whole show, okay. So basically the way the game works is it rates every single one of your angles and matches based on all these different stats. Our match focus is three ring circus. And what that means is our show will be weighted to grade the top three matches of that show. So as long as my top three matches are good matches, my, my show will get a good rating and everything else doesn't really matter. We could change it to main event focus where just the main event has to be really good. But I like to keep things as normal as possible, and Three Ring Circus is definitely doable in SWF, so we're going to keep it. So they'll expect our events, our events, which like pay-per-views, to be 80% matches, 20% angles. They'll expect our TV shows to be 65% matches and 35% angles. Matches are rated on a ratio between 40-60 and 60-40 in-ring action slash popularity. We're not as much rated on work rate as a, as a lot of like promotions would be. We're more rated on popularity. Fans will, fans will be upset by dangerous, controversial, bloody match types. Matches less than 15 minutes will not be able to achieve world-class scores. Eye candy matches, so that means something like a, a brawn panties match, will be penalized. Death matches will be severely penalized. Dangerous match setups will be penalized. Risky angles will not go down well. Angles that are primarily based on sex appeal have their overall rating limited. All workers are expected to be using a gimmick or there'll be a large penalty. Fans will expect there'll be lots of ongoing storylines. Major matches will be penalized if they don't have an associated storyline. Each show will need at least one match aimed at storytelling. Hardcore skill will not be used in regular match calculations. The company will be very attractive to sponsors, which is great. Attendance levels are very strongly affected by the state of the wrestling industry. Using stump bumps give boosts to segments, but fans do not like to see crazy bumps. So there's stump bumps and crazy bumps. Comedy-based gimmicks can be used even by stars and major stars. Having a wrestler be forced to unmask will add some heat to a segment. Having someone shaved bald as a forfeit can add a little heat to a segment. Those are basically the rules we have to follow when booking the show. Now, I can change I can change the product base, which is classic sports entertainment, but it's going to take time and take one year to complete, and it will limit our popularity. So we're going to keep this because I like booking this style. It works for me. Roster, we already went over. Stables, we have two stables right now. We have the Rat Pack. Not a major player, but they're a solid part of the company. Leader, Hollywood, Brett Starr, Monty Triscard, Paul Huntington, Justin Sensitive. And then we have Unleashed Awesomeness, which is the awesomeness, the tag team, Randy Unleashed, and their manager, BJ O'Neill. So they're an important part of the SWF landscape. Uh, we'll eventually build more stables. Storylines, we've gone over. Teams, we have Faith and Old Glory, which is Maddie Faith and Mass Patriot. Fame and Money, our tag team champions. Hawaiian Crush. The Awesomeness, Dallas Cowboys, 
and the Pain Alliance. Solid tag teams all around. Our titles. Yes, we haven't really talked a lot about titles. We have three titles in the SWF. We have the North American title, which is our mid title, and it's uh, Des Davids is the champ. We have the World Heavyweight title, which is uh, very prestigious, 91 prestige. And uh, Rocky Golden is first-time champ here. Um, as you can see, Jack Bruce won it seven times in his career, which is pretty cool. When you consider Rogues won it three times, and Remo's won it three times, Valiant with two, it's a little little lacking there. Valiant needs to step your game up. And we got some older guys that are in different companies like Steve Freely, Steve Freely, Rich Money. There's Eric Eisen's reign, which, every, which they were saying was a big deal. There's uh, Skull to Bones one reign, Vengeance is Vengeance. He, he won it one time. Uh, Christian Faith here, who we talked about earlier, four, four wins anyway. Tag team. We got our Prestige 60 tag team titles. So there's our titles. Tournaments we won't worry about because we're not running any tournaments right now. Announcers we did. Broadcasting. So right now for events, we are on two different channels for events. We have our American pay, pay, pay-per-view thing, which is rated big in coverage in all areas, and our Canadian one, big coverage in all Canadian areas. And for our TV show, we're on Can, which uh, has... Big coverage in the U.S., medium coverage in Canada, and medium coverage in Mexico. So those are the only places where we're being seen on a monthly or weekly basis. Um, what we can do is for um, we can look at broadcasters and we can see who will negotiate with us for Mexico because we don't have any pay-per-view coverage in Mexico. And so I think these guys will let us do it for events. Um, they want a minimum of 12 episodes for a year. Let maybe uh, we'll sign one year with them because if I want to change, and we want to be on prime time, baby. But we're for, if we're on prime time, our minimum quality needs to be 67. But for a pay per view, if we're not hitting a 67, I deserve to lose my job. Um, and then let's see how much money they'll give us. Not 55. Not 50. 45? No, 40. No, 35. There we go. They're gonna they're gonna host our pay per views in Mexico for a year, and we get thirty five percent of the revenue. Sounds good. Done. Easy. We could just add another TV show right now, but I don't want to start off that way. Um, one thing I am gonna do though, our first couple shows are gonna struggle to hit this eighty one minimum quality until we get some more guys over. So I'm gonna actually adjust the time slot to evening. No, that's not good. Late night. Early evening? I think we can hit early evening. So we're going to propose the change. They agree to it. We're good. So that way we don't get hit our, our television channel. Because if you... I believe it's three times in a row. If you don't meet the minimum quality, they, they can you. They get rid of your show. And then that hurts. We don't want that. So moving on. Coverage. This just shows where we have coverage. Right now we don't have coverage anywhere besides these three uh, territories. And that's what's hurting us against USPW is that uh, they have coverage everywhere. Events and TV, these are our events for the year. Uh, the second Thursday in every month is our pay-per-view night. Show history, this is where you start your show history. This is our top 100 uh, events. Once you get going, you can really go by that. Backstage, we kind of looked at before. But basically... Um, our backstage rules are kind of keeping it where our backstage rating is really good. Even though my leadership sucks and we have some relationships where people don't like each other and we have some negative influence uh, people like Joey Morgan and Matsuki and all that stuff. Maku- Makutsi? Makutsi is probably how you say it. Um, but we can change these rules to be more strict or less strict. Um, but SWF pretty much has the right setup for the rules. So we'll leave that alone. Child companies. So this is our child company, RIP, as I've been calling it. It is uh, Our CEO is Mean Gene Catley, who is a uh, pretty renowned independent wrestler for a long time. And then Wilson Carlisle is a referee, and he's our booker, and he's a pretty good booker, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we're going to do another episode where I go over our our, um, our development roster so you guys can kind of see who we got, what's going on there. But before we leave the development roster, what I need to do is look at their schedule. So right now they're running one event a month. And honestly, that's not going to do us any damn good. So what we're going to do is we're going to click redo schedule. And this is actually a new tool in this version of the game, which I really like. 
we're going to set our schedule to constant redo schedule. So now, as you can see, we are running two shows a week, sometimes three. So what this will do is we'll get a um, constant stream of shows being held and we'll get a large amount of workers into our development territory. And it's kind of cheating because it's a little unrealistic. But what will happen is we'll see these guys get over and get skilled very fast and be able to get up and make our, our overall roster better. So that's what we're going to do there. Um, their product is a little more rated on, um, on in-ring talent. So that's good, too, because it's more indie. But, yeah, we'll go over more with Rip uh, in a different episode. Drug testing. Right now, we have a, a low-level drug testing policy, which means that a small random selection of workers are taken after each non-tour show and given a standard test. Standard tests are fairly good at catching heavy users, but are unreliable on lesser amounts. The problem with this policy is that a random basis means that people can slip through the cracks and avoid detection. So, I can just comprehensive test everyone right now. I'm not going to, because I know there's a couple people that will fail it. We're going to leave it low level for now because we're not in trouble for it or anything. We'll see what happens with that. Finance, you can just check out your finances. We're down $3,500, $3,000 in production because we made that production change. Not a big deal. We have $30 million. Um, House shows. So house shows are run automatically, which is nice. Um, but what I tend to see happen is workers get tired way faster with this kind of schedule, the three times a week. So what we're going to do is every other week we're going to be three times a week. Otherwise, we'll be two. Um, I can also do house show booking, meaning I can, for example, put uh, Brett, Brett Biggins with American Machine and see if they have good chemistry as partners. And after a few house shows, it will tell me. I can do that with any number of workers. I just can't use the same worker every time. Um, I don't use it a whole lot because I don't... I mean, I guess I could say, oh... Uh, is Bear Bukowski a good opponent for Akuma? Right? To me, it takes too long, and it's like I'd rather just run a show and see what happens. But we'll put it in there, and we'll see what happens after that. Hall of Fame. Here's our Hall of Fame. Uh, Christian Faith, inducted 2015, four-time World Heavyweight Champion. Jack Bruce, seven-time World Heavyweight Champion. Mickey Starr, two-time World Heavyweight Champion. Peter Michaels, former announcer, um, really good announcer, retired from the business. Richard Eisen, the former owner. Rip Cord, three-time World Heavyweight Champion. Sam Keith, four-time World Heavyweight Champion. Sam Strong, four-time Heavyweight Champion. And the Lords of War, four-time World Tag Team Champion. Kind of familiar-looking tag team there if you if you follow real wrestling. Uh, investments, I can come in here and I can like make a new developmental company, make a new training facility, make my own broadcaster, so like the WWE Network, I can make that. I can purchase a classic title belt. I can make a venue. I can edit or sell a venue. So there's a lot of cool stuff I can do with my money if I make a lot of money, which I like. The broadcaster one is very powerful, actually, because what I can do is I can make my own broadcaster and then put my developmental company on one day a week or two days a week and then have my broadcaster set to be shown everywhere. And they just start getting over like crazy. And then they come up to the main roster over and ready to roll. Um, medical. If anybody's injured, it will show it here. Sometimes they're hurt enough where they require surgery. And we can decide whether they're given surgery or not. And there's a risk that it goes bad. But we'll get to that when we get there. Merchandise. Um, we're going to... Basically, we're level 8 out of 10 of merchandise. But we're going to rapidly upgrade that. Because we're one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, we want to be 10 out of 10. So it's going to cost me this much a week to give me 1%. So after, you know, however many weeks that is, I'm not good at math, but we'll get up to level 9 and then we'll do it again. And then once we start doing shows, it will show us who's our top merch guys, which having Jack Bruce on the roster is kind of a cheat in the way because he's going to sell a shit ton of merch and that's going to help. Um, it'd be like if, if we were playing like a real world mod of this game, like putting Hulk Hogan on like an indie roster, he would just sell so much merch and that, that's all he'd be there for. We don't have any owner goals yet. You have to go one day before he shows us the owner goals. Production, we already looked at. Promises. Um, sometimes wrestlers will come to you and say, hey, so-and-so seems like a really good up-and-coming worker. I'll put him over four times in the next three months if you want to. And so that this screen just keeps track of that for you. Size. So this is um, kind of like the goal of the game. 
is to raise your size. So this is our popularity across America and all the regions. Canada, Mexico, British Isles, Japan. All these are 15 because we don't have any view there. Um, right now we're large size, which we got to by achieving big size, which was 77 popularity across America, uh, Eastern America, and then 71 throughout the regions of either Canada and Mexico, which we have Canada at 73. Titanic, we have to achieve large size, which we are, and also 77 in every other region of the game world, which I don't think USPW is there. Here we can look and see. No, they're not there yet. But they're close, and it, it ain't going to take them long to get there. Within a year, probably, they'll get there. Um, and they're, they're, they're hard to take down at that point. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, back to size. So, our, our size goes up if we do, I think it's like five, three points higher than what the popularity is. So, if we get a 81, it will go up. And you have to continue to do better and better, and then it'll go up. We can also track our process so progress over time, which is cool. Ticket prices, I don't really mess with this, to be honest. And then training facilities. This is our training facility, Supreme Wrestling University. We are the first people to have a performance center. It's based in Hawaii. Um, it's similar to like the WWE has a performance center in Orlando. The training level is 75%. The facilities are 55%. So training level, the higher level, the better quality the students who graduate will be, but the more expensive the training cost becomes. So we're just going to upgrade this right now, 100%. I just spent a shit ton of money. I don't care. I'm going to do the same with these. <sighs> this is starting to spend some real money. Whew, I just spent $8 million. Um, but when these graduate in August, these guys graduate in August, I'll have 12 of them, and they'll be the highest quality they can be. And it costs us that much a month to use. So I better start making some money. So there we go. Supreme Wrestling University. We have external down here. We have alliances. Um, we're probably too big to be an alliance, but there's an alliance here in um, North America, um, which is pretty cool, actually. Um, COTT, the Confederation of the Territories. And they have, like, a champion that, like, will work all the... work all, f all five of the... Um, promotions which i think is really cool it's a cool it's like it's kind of it replicates like the nwa back in back in the 80s um and before so i think that's really cool we probably won't be doing much with it we are going to start searching for some more talent to join our roster so in order to do this there's obviously hundreds and thousands of workers in this game so we're going to do a little searching here we're looking for men because we don't have women any women wrestlers in our company we're looking for wrestlers that can work in the usa our intention is to hire and uh let's see how little that brings it down so see that didn't that didn't really bring it down much right so again we're gonna look for a specific stat we want someone who has decently high charisma okay so that's gonna bring it down quite a bit right i don't know if you remember if we go to creative and go to hidden gems there are five workers here that they said, hey, these guys might be good to you. And if you'll notice, Fro Sure, Gary the Entertainer, and Papa Swole are all on there. So we're going to sign these boys and at least throw them down in developmental. Fro Sure is one of the guys I sign every time. He just always seems to have a high destiny stat. His star quality is through the roof. His charisma and microphone are great. And he's all, I mean, he's only 28, and he already has really good brawling and, and basic skills. So we're going to negotiate with him. He's probably going to want $6,000 a month. So we're going to say that. He says, cool. Boom. Signed him. Or not signed him, but sent him the offer. And then we'll find out in a day or two we sign him. Gary the Entertainer is a ridiculous prospect because his charisma is 87 and his acting is 90. He's a young professional wrestler from Washington, D.C. He's not a great worker, but he's an entertainment guy. So he's worked as a children's magician. And so and for some reason he has a monkey in his... Uh, in his fucking render, which I think is funny, like he hangs out with like a monkey. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sign this guy for sure because after a few years in developmental, he's gonna be a ridiculous star for us. Hopefully, guys that don't have written contracts usually accept a three-year deal for six thousand dollars a month. Papa Swole, again, another ridiculous charisma guy. His microphone work isn't as good, but we can get him up there. I just like his look. I think Papa Swole's a, a, a good dude. I also really like Mutant. He's like one of those bizarre characters, kind of like Gold Dust was back in the day. 
and he's got high charisma and star quality and acting and so and he's not bad he's not a bad wrestler either so again we're gonna like i said we're gonna fill our developmental ranks with a lot of young workers like this i'm gonna pass on this guy um the reason he's showing up there is because menace his menace stat is really high and his star quality is pretty high and so the game's like hey you'll want to sign this guy but if you see all these yellow stats, like look at the stamina, and he's 38, so he's not, he's on the downswing. So he's not someone that actually would really help us. If he was more over, like if he had some like 50s and 60s in here, I could maybe make it work, but that's not, that's not gonna help us. As for the other guys that popped up here, there's Charlie Corner. Yeah, I, uh, Charlie Corner looks like a good prospect. He's got good charisma to start. He's very young. So we'll sign him up and we'll throw him in developmental for five years and see what happens with him, right? Or three years, I guess, is what we're signing him to. Extraordinario Jr. is a good worker, a really good worker. I don't usually sign him, but we'll 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 give him a shot. Now we're gonna go for star quality. We're gonna I want to see if there's anybody, and you know I want to go anywhere because we can poach some guys from Australia, especially that have really high star. Okay, so like Captain Wrestling too has some good star quality. He's very over in Oceana, but that's not gonna translate where we are for whatever reason but we're gonna leave him alone because he's he's older um jt ace is maybe possibly a good signing he has 90 star quality he's not a great worker but he's only 21 so we're gonna we're gonna view his profile we're gonna talk to him and that's where the silver tongue comes in because i can just say hey be active in the usa and he goes sure and then i can negotiate with him now i don't need to do that specifically because we are a large company, large size company, and therefore we can attract workers without doing that. If we were a smaller company, I'd have to do that, but I like to do it anyway just to make it like accurate, you know. So see a lot of these guys are actually Australian guys. Loxley Robbins, Luke Steele, Masa Masakurada is just an insane worker. Now he's not over where we are. He's he's pretty over in Japan. But we're gonna sign him and we're gonna put him in a developmental deal. And similar to like a, oh, that's right. He won't sign an exclusive deal because he's loyal. But we could do like a hand, uh, written contract that's not exclusive. And he can still work over there. And I don't care if he works over there. You know what I mean? Like that, that doesn't bother me. I'm not like, I'm not Vince McMahon where it's like, you can only work for us. This Will, this Will Beaumont guy is actually very interesting because he has a really high star quality, high charisma. The rest of his stats aren't great. But I think we can get him there. He's only 21. So we're going to sign him away as well. Okay, so I really, I really like Dreadnought because he's like Vader. And his dad um, was a guy named Dread, who was like a legendary worker in this world. And um, he started training wrestlers, and he trained his son. And he has really high menace and star quality and charisma. He's not a great worker, but I think we can throw him down developmental, and he, will, he can be like... A huge hoss for us because like i love a good hoss you know frankie perez was the independent wrestler of the year i've had good and bad luck with frankie perez but i think frankie perez we can actually sign and put on the main roster i think i think he's ready to just roll time lapse time lapse time lapse time lapse it's a time lapse i'm signing wrestlers signing wrestlers i'm offering contracts to wrestlers i'm not actually signing them i'm just offering <laughs> All right, so there's a few specific guys I like to poach where it's like, oh, where do I sign them at? But I usually go to New York City Wrestling, and there's one particular guy right away that I'm like, yo, I want this guy. Hawkeye Calhoun. And it's like, this guy wears a baseball mask. That's lame. But he's actually one of those really solid workers that you can put in your um, developmental territory. And he's not really a guy that you like take out and push to the moon, but he's there to like hold down the developmental territory so i really like him i like super massive destroyer just because it's like funny to me he's a huge dude but we'll leave him to see if he gets some work and because it's not always great to just sign everybody and then go oh uh i got everybody now well now what do i do with them but there's certain guys i like to sign right away and certain guys i like to let stew a little bit in where they are if they're in a good situation now if they're not hired by anybody it's kind of like well you might as well sign them and give them some work but the architect 88 basics right now Seven, he's a technician really good i like the architect so we're kind of setting the the grounds for our future here which will also, we'll also go i'm going to go through our developmental territory after this and show you who we have already and then finally we're going to go to czcw which is like 
basically our developmental league, if we're being honest. Actually, you know, I'm going to leave some of these guys here and let them work. Um, okay, so there's two more workers I, w I definitely want to sign right now or send contracts to. Jackpot Jordan and his tag team partner, Jake Idol, because they come in as a dynamic tag team for us right off the get-go in first in developmental just for just a couple months and then i bring them right up and they're a great heel tag team okay so let's talk about our developmental territory and for that we're going to go to rhode island pro wrestling tour company our most popular stars are dominic d'souza who we just sent down uh chill who we just sent down the supremely athletic Diva Arnold, Hellion, who oozes star quality, and the reigning RIP champion, Forrest Ratzloff. Let's go by their perception. Well, we got a small roster here. No major stars. That's okay. Stars. We got Diva Arnold. So Diva, he's hit or miss. Sometimes he comes up great, but if you look at his entertainment stats, it's like, wow, he's really bad at that. I don't know how he could push a guy who can't talk at all. Um, I guess it, if he has a really good manager, that works, but he doesn't. Forrest Ratloff, another guy who's just, it's kind of like, wait, uh, I don't know what his purpose is. His stats are better here, but he's not a great worker. And it even says in here, he didn't used to be a great worker, and he's gotten a little better. Hellion is similar to uh, Charger Sayaki, where it's like he's kind of a guy that doesn't fit with what we do. But, you know, he'll be in developmental. We'll see how he does. Mean Gene, obviously, is the, book, is the CEO, so he's not working for us. Warwick Good, I've never brought him up. He hasn't ever been ready for me to be brought up. But he has like good starting stats, so we'll see what happens with him. Well-known boys. We got Remington Remus, the announcer. You look at his announcing stat, it's not bad. So he could possibly be the um, replacement for Dwayne Fry down the road. He's 31, so he's not much younger than Dwayne, but he's there. Uh, Samson Sharp is someone who I'm not super in love with in developmental, and he will, I think, if his, it depends on when his contract's up, because if his contract comes up in the first couple months, I'm probably just going to let him go. Smooth C's the color commentator. Uh, he's not great. 66. He's all right. People like him, though. And that's the ref and the booker. Recognizable. As you can see, there's not a lot of popularity going on here. Uh, Brian Do It Jew It. <laughs> this is such a weird name. But he's a fresh-faced little boy there, right? And he's got some good stats. The last game I played, he tore his ACL and was out for like a year and a half. And so hopefully that doesn't happen to him this time. But he's the reigning RIP USA title holder. Uh, Hank Whitman is just another kind of generic dude down here that I hope turns into something. But he's very generic right now. Haas Hanley uh, is another guy who, if his contract comes up very quick, I'm probably letting him go because he's not super impressive to me. Uh, and now you see why I, I signed a bunch of guys to developmental because it's like I don't really like a lot of the guys that we have in developmental. Uh, Kingsley Christopher, I do like a lot um, with his partner, Nuque Brown. And I think they're going to uh, be a tag team that I bring up after about a year or so to come come wrestle, you know. And they got to gain some, some popularity, but they're the tag team champs right now. Rocky Weatherfield, uh, again, a lot of these guys that they have in the base uh, – developmental turkey are just kind of bland dudes and they need to gain some personality of who they are um he actually has decent charisma so we'll see with him whole lot of marvin i like a lot whole lot of marvin has really high charisma and star quality and menace and um really athletic and powerful he's just got to get good at wrestling and if he gets good at wrestling and gets that microphone set up a little bit he could be huge you know uh willie La larue is a character that i've seen get really over in like watcher games so hopefully he does the same thing here and then unimportant our last category baron royal good charisma but pretty bland not a good worker clubber ball and crusher ball <laughs> i think if i brought these guys up i'd rename them cbt uh <laughs> but they're pretty generic and terrible but I'd like because they're a tag team that's like matching i they still pique my interest regardless because i'm like oh yeah tag team cool uh kurt Merritt's a weird one because he can be a color commentator or a manager Where's his color skill? His color skill's not great. 59, it's like, yeah. Drew Danson is a guy I'm really excited about. He's got good stats, decent charisma. His microphone skill is really weird. Um, like, that's incredibly strange um, that it's a 12. Like, that's just so bad. Hopefully that gets better. Lucinda Lush is his manager, and she's okay. She'll get better with time. Marty Simmons and Stevie Stanley are all-night party, and they are... 
again, a tag team. So I'm like, ooh, I hope they get good because I like tag teams. Roderick Flack, Flack Attack, uh, he's got some star quality and some charisma. So if he shores up everything, he could be good. Son of Vengeance is actually really funny because this is actually the son of Skull the Bones or Vengeance. Um, Cherry Martin. And he's the problem is he's extremely green. He's 18, so he needs a lot of time to work. But if I can get him up there before school retires again, uh, that would be cool to do a, a son and son and father thing with him. Zap Powerson's really good because he has really high star quality and charisma. And if he can get anything else good up here, he'll he'll be someone to push. Zeke Comstock, stock, Com- Cromstock. Oh my God, I might just name him Comstock to make it easier. Uh, again, it's another character that has a lot of uh, charisma and could end up being good. And Zarnel Zephaniah um, is interesting because he's a, he's a character that does he still intend taking MMA bouts? Every game I've played, he's taken MMA bouts, and he still wrestles, but then he'll like leave to an MMA bouts. That's pretty cool. All right, so that's my development territory, and we're gonna throw some other guys in there. Um, lastly, what we're gonna do is we're going to find some popular workers, and what I mean by that is, hey, give me some people that are over that I can hire in the U.S. Brian Vesey's interesting because every game I've played, I've been able to talk Brian Vesey into coming out of retirement. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw an offer at, at Vesey, twenty uh, who he wants a higher cut of the merchandise. Okay, I can do that. Here's twenty five percent. And if I can get him to come out of retirement, that would be pretty good. Oh wait, what did I just what what did I just offer him? Shit, I did that wrong. Um, talk to worker, career. Come on, retirement. You've convinced me. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to change his thing because we want him to do ring work. And the contract we first offered him was no ring work, so that's not good. Uh, he doesn't want to be available for house shows. That's fine. Because he's a wrestler now, he wants more money. Okay, uh, 75. How's that? Oh, my God. How much higher of a cut? Here, 35%. There you go. Get out of here. Ricky Dale Johnson's retired. He's not going to be able to help us much. RDJ. I could hire him as a manager because he actually has really good charisma and he's over, but we'll leave him for now and then because I don't have any ideas for him and if we won't pull him. Same with Ross Henry, who's like a guy, he's a former pro football player who retired and then did one match and now he doesn't want to wrestle anymore, but he actually has decent charisma and okay microphone skills, so we could bring him in to do that. And then Sam Keith is the owner of Ma, so he's not going to want to come be a part of what we're doing. Here's where it gets a little interesting because we have our boy Chris Caulfield, who's unemployed, pretty over. Um, he's not much of a wrestler anymore. And by that, I mean his stamina is pretty poor. But he has really high psychology, and if we get his respect up, he could be a good road agent for us after he retires. So we're going to we're gonna hire him, and that will help us. Um, it's just another star, not star, but maybe a well-known guy to have. And then Pablo Rodriguez is another interesting one. So he's the cop heavyweight champion, which is that alliance we talked about earlier. And he's pretty over, and he's a good worker, even though he's 44. So we're going to we're gonna give him an offer. He wants to not work house shows, da-da-da. Higher cut of the merchandise. They must have put a patch in this game where these guys are being more picky, because I don't remember them being this picky. What we're going to do to end this little episode here is we are going to go to the next day, because I believe uh, Mr. Jerry Eisen is going to give us some owner goals. I'm a little scared what he's going to do, because it's possible he's going to tell me I can't sign certain guys that I've already offered contracts to, and that's a pain. Um, He's probably going to tell me there's certain workers that by the end of the deadline, he's going to want to be over. Oh, no. SWF is in turmoil today after it was revealed that they attempted to feed rumors to some of the key sponsors of the rival USPW in an effort to disrupt their revenue stream. The embarrassment has stung SWF officials, but not as much as the potential front of legal action against them. Oh, no. So my whole uh, tampering failed. Also, uh, best color commenter in wrestling, Emma Chase, in a, in a fan poll. All right, let's go look at these goals and hope they're not terrible. Okay, when time expires in two years, three months, and three weeks, SWF must have at least as much popularity in the U.S. as it did when the goal was set. Critical importance, okay. You cannot hire anybody who already works for a company of medium size or above. (laughs) That one's awful. 
but it's high importance. I could get away with signing one person. Jerry Eisen wants you to build a vibrant tag team scene. When the time expires, you must have at least four active tag teams. So before experience, that one's easy. You cannot hire or extend a contract of any wrestler who has a 60 in toughness. You cannot hire or extend a contract of anybody who has a reputation of less than 75. Ah, which that's not that bad because everybody starts with 100. And then it goes down if they do stupid things. Oh, no. The wrestling industry is not doing good. Oh, no. I should have checked that. Okay. It's rising in Canada. So what? And Mexico. Okay. Perfect. So what I can do is if the wrestling industry is really bad in the U.S., which it looks like it is, I can do shows in Canada and Mexico in order to subsidize that until it comes back up so i've done that before that will work fine next time we are going to book our first show because as you can see our first show is supreme tv tonight and we're going to book our first show and i'll talk about some of my booking plans and we'll see how the show goes and then we'll also probably pre-book pre-book matches for our first pay-per-view when hell freezes over so thank you guys and we will see you next time bye bye <laughs>